Welcome everyone to the second talk of the engagement day at the Research Culture Week. Research culture has many different aspects. Some are more personal, many involve others. We try to cover a different topic each day. So tomorrow we will cover the attainment gap with some amazing speakers. On Thursday, we will focus on career development. And then on Friday, we focus on our mental and physical health. So please join us for these talks as well. This morning, Jim covered many aspects of the development of science communication and why it is more important now than ever. Our afternoon speaker, Mirjana Povic, has spent over 10 years in different parts of Africa working on development in astronomy, science and education. Currently, she, she is an assistant professor at the Ethiopian Space and Science and Technology Institute and an associate researcher at the Astrophysical Institute in Andalusia in Spain. She obtained her PhD in astrophysics in 2010 at the Astrophysical Institute in the Canaries. In 2018, she received the inaugural Nature Research Award for Inspiring Science for her research activities and her contribution to the society. She believes that through education and science, we can fight poverty in the long term and make our world a better place for everyone, independently of where your roots are. Her talk is titled Science for Development in Africa, using astronomy as an example. Please put any questions you have in the Q&A box. Welcome, Mirjana. So thank you very much, uh, Sophia, for, for the introduction. And I would also like to give my, uh, my thanks to uh, Noelia for the invitation and also for organizing uh, uh, this week uh, with all the interesting uh, speakers and, uh, and talks. And I really appreciate uh, uh, any kind of activities that um, uh, we put the efforts to organize where we can show different aspects of the science and how important really the science is for our society. So not only the research that we are doing, but uh, in many other uh, aspects um, as well. Um, so thank you very much once again for uh, all the organization and work done and then uh, for the invitation. I'm, I'm really happy to be here with uh, all of you. I will try to share my screen. Um, and to put this as a full screen. So is that okay? Is it working? Yes, it looks good. And you can hear me well, no? Yes, as well. Okay, perfect. Okay, so then, uh, then I will start. Um, I think I have about 40 minutes, uh, if, if that's correct. I think uh, Noe told me about 40, 45 minutes for the presentation and then we can leave some time for the questions. So is that still, is that still the case? Yes, exactly. Okay, perfect. So um, I will be talking a bit about uh, um, how we can use the science for development, uh, in particularly focusing on, on Africa. And then I will use astronomy, my field, uh, as an example. I think it's actually a very good example because very often we connect astronomy and space science only with, uh, um, let's say, developed uh, countries. Uh, and then um, uh, it is not always clear for the society, even for, for uh, very often our colleagues uh, from the field, uh, how really uh, we can use uh, astronomy or space science for the development. And actually that's one of the most common questions that I was uh, getting uh, over the past 10, 15 years uh, of my, during my work in different African countries. Um, how astronomy and space science uh, can contribute to African development and also why um, uh, African governments uh, uh, shall invest in astronomy and space science, taking into account uh, many of the challenges that many of the African countries are facing. And I think um, my answer is always that, uh, yes, it is extremely important that we invest uh, in those fields that are, let's say, first aid fields, such as uh, agriculture, the access to the water or electricity, and so on, but uh, for avoiding uh, a humanitarian crisis. But uh, in the same time, really, uh, if we want to fight poverty in the long term, 
uh, and really uh, achieve in future sustainable development goals. And actually, sustainable development goals uh, are all about that, how we can really fight poverty in the long term. Then I think those fields that I marked uh, here uh, in so many colors, so a bit putting in line with sustainable development goals, I think are really fundamental, uh, especially focusing on education, science and technology, and then including involving all the uh, population that we have, so putting especially emphasis, uh, uh, the, the special um, um, emphasis on, uh, on females and improving the diversity, I think are really fundamental in order to, um, to fight the poverty in the long term. And if we really want to uh, come up with the long term solutions, then we also need long term planning in terms of the financial support as well. And I would also add uh, uh, that um, uh, the local or African initiatives are really fundamental. Uh, there, is, uh, there are amazing efforts that our African colleagues are doing in terms of science uh, development, education development, technology as well. And I think from outside, uh, we can simply support and help as much as needed and as much as wanted. Um, Beside that, I think uh, astronomy and space science uh, already shown uh, uh, over the past decades that they can be an important tool for development and also uh, important tool to contribute to the sustainable development goals. And I here listed some of the aspects, different aspects, uh, uh, important aspects of astronomy and space science. And then I uh, try to connect uh, uh, them with different sustainable development uh, goals. So definitely astronomy is shown to be extremely powerful tool for promoting education and also for uh, inspiring and promoting uh, science. Uh, I will remind you that astronomy is a very multidisciplinary science. It's actually one of the most multidisciplinary sciences that we have. And it's related with different fundamental sciences, such as mathematics, physics, biology, chemistry, geology, and so on, but also with different aspects of the Technologic of technology, such as uh, contribution to the computing, it's related with the engineering, it's related with the um, uh, with uh, 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 material sciences, and so on. Um, and then also it uh, is related with different aspects of our society, such as. Uh, um, um, uh, cultural astronomy, such as uh, uh, such our religions uh, and so on. Uh, then, as I said, uh, it's a very powerful tool for promoting uh, science. Uh, we also have great examples how through astronomy and space science we can contribute to the social and economical growth. And we can use South Africa as an example where uh, South African government recognized astronomy and space science to be uh, two fundamental fields uh, and priority fields for social and economical growth of the country. Um, being always uh, on the edge of our knowledge and trying to, uh, to come up uh, uh, with uh, uh, new knowledge about uh, uh, really many of still open questions that we have about uh, the universe. Um, uh, astronomy, astrophysics are constantly uh, bringing new technological um, uh, developments and uh, contributing significantly to the to the innovation, and then uh, I would say that um, in many aspects more than other sciences, just taking into account the dimension and the scope of many of the international uh, projects that we currently have in astronomy and space science. Uh, um, uh, they can be really used uh, efficiently for promoting peace and then international collaborations. And we have, uh, as a great example, SKA, the Square Kilometer Array um, uh, project in astronomy, the, in radio astronomy, that is basically a project for the uh, 50 years, uh, including many of the international partners and then nine African countries in Africa and then Australia as well. And then we uh, also shall not forget that um, uh, basically our daily life nowadays depends on the satellite data and we use the space-based data and Earth observations 
for basically every single aspect of our society, starting from the positioning, navigation, um, uh, using space-based data for improving uh, agriculture productivity, for improving the access to the water, for improving um, uh, the urban planning. Uh, we now have the uh, satellite uh, 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 medicine, the satellite education as well, and so on. So. Uh, in future, it will be even more. In future, our uh, daily life will be connected with uh, space-based data even more. So basically, if we put everything together on the long term, we can really say that we can contribute to basically all of the sustainable development goals. Um, nowadays, we are already facing a new revolution that is a digital revolution. We are living already it's it's a part of our life and if we come to the point of the uh, digital revolution and connection with astronomy or let's say how astronomy contributed to the digital revolution in which we are and we see definitely the importance of the digital revolution in the in uh, in nowadays in the period of covid so Wi-Fi, uh, that basically we can't imagine our life uh, nowadays without Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi was uh, for the very first uh, time um, uh, invented uh, through the astronomy, uh, through the astronomers who were studying uh, the physics behind the black holes. And uh, nowadays, as I said, uh, uh, it forms uh, one of the basic parts of our life. Uh, if we come uh, to the more current contributions, uh, astronomy contributed really a lot to the computing, to the communication uh, uh, sector, to the GPS and navigation, to the imaging. And all of these four that I mentioned are fundamental for the digital uh, revolution in which we are. So if we take uh, uh, just one example of each uh, uh, astronomy really through the big data that we are dealing with, uh, uh, studying, observing and studying uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of, uh, of um, galaxies and stars uh, um, uh, in the past and nowadays uh, even more. Uh, it contributed really a lot to the development of grid computing, uh, clustering, supercomputers in communication, satellite communications that again are one of the fundamental parts of uh, uh, our nowadays communication systems was also uh, benefited a lot from the astronomy. Uh, the GPS uh, that again uh, uh, we are using in our daily life, uh, uh, it's again related with uh, very precise uh, measuring of the time, basically what we call the atomic clocks. And we cannot have atomic clocks without observations of quasars and faraway galaxies. And then imaging, uh, basically the um, imaging is an important part of the digital revolution and then the communication. Every single mobile, Android mobile that we are using nowadays has a small CCD inside uh, 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 making possible that we take uh, images and then share, uh, share them. Um, and these uh, CCDs have been again developed uh, for studying the universe uh, and different celestial sources. And if we go to the future and what we can expect, I mean, uh, we can expect even bigger data coming in astronomy and development of totally new technologies. And SKA again uh, is one of the really great examples. So we can expect, uh, we are expecting huge revolution with the SKA development where just in terms of the amount of data and data flow that we will be having uh, that we expect is about 100 times faster data flow than what we currently, uh, currently have in the whole world. So uh, once again, this is just uh, one of the examples how through the uh, astronomy we are uh, contributing to all the technological development uh, that we are uh, currently facing. So if all of this is true, if uh, we have different examples how the countries benefited for astronomy space science, uh, especially countries that are, um, uh, let's say, high um, um, uh, income uh, uh, countries, then we can ask the question why uh, astronomy and space science then also can be cannot be used for the development um, uh, in in Africa and in different African countries, especially taking into account that uh, the fact that Africa has a huge potential for astronomy development. In astronomy, we need dark skies, and dark skies are still one of the natural resources in Africa. 
This will uh, change in future, hopefully soon, in terms of uh, bringing uh, more power to more people. But if we uh, can conserve, if we conserve some of the dark sky areas so that we can still uh, work uh, on, um, uh, on the astronomy development uh, from, uh, from the ground, then definitely many of the countries can benefit uh, from that. And uh, South Africa, uh, plus another eight African countries already, already recognize that there are projects in terms of the conservation of the uh, large areas uh, so that the dark sky is uh, conserved so that in future we can really benefit uh, uh, in Africa from um, um, uh, different astronomical sites and infrastructure uh, development. So we have great examples such as Chile, such as Canary Islands in Spain or South Africa that now are some of the best astronomical sites that we have who benefited a lot from the infrastructure development uh, in astronomy and then through that really benefited uh, in social economical development aspect as, as well. And this is really a bit uh, coming the uh, continental um, uh, vision and initiative as well. So if we go to the level of the African Union in 2015, uh, when the um, uh, Millennium Goals uh, um, uh, finalized and uh, we came with the Sustainable Development Goals, African Union selected science, technology and innovation to be the second pillar in order to achieve SDGs. And uh, the African Union also recognized the use of the space and geospatial technologies for that. And um, in, uh, in relation to that, we now have the African Space Agency that was uh, established in Egypt and the very first African space strategy uh, where again, space science and astronomy have been recognized as two important fields for achieving sustainable development goals. And if you come to uh, different, uh, now to the individual countries, many of the governments uh, and our African colleagues are putting really amazing efforts in developing the infrastructure, working in the institution, on the institutional development as well, but also a lot on the human capacity building. I will mention that uh, soon. So this is just, uh, uh, one example with a map, and you can see in different parts of Africa, in different countries, those infrastructures that are either already there or um, under the development. And uh, in 2018, um, uh, we published in Nature Astronomy a small summary about the status of astronomy space science. Uh, it was a work uh, between uh, more than 20 African countries. and. Um, we are now working under the African Astronomical Society. We are now working on a new survey in order to, uh, let's say, update uh, this uh, map because many things um, uh, are there, uh, have been uh, arising in the last uh, two years. This is similar, but in terms of the space science. So as you can see, again, many of the countries are putting efforts to develop their space science, uh, space agencies, uh, satellite, uh, different programs in satellite technologies and so on. So I will now go just briefly. I know that not all of you are from the uh, background in astronomy, but you know, very often uh, when we speak about astronomy, space science, people think that there is no any kind of infrastructure or activities going on. And um, uh, actually the, the, the current situation is uh, quite different. There are many things going on. Uh, it is true that astronomy, space science are still very, uh, recent fields uh, in most of the African continent. So in most of African countries, we are just starting actually. Uh, but I will just go through uh, some of the, the um, through the status and some of the current uh, developments so that you can really see that there is uh, actually a lot going on. So if we come to the radio astronomy, which is really one of the fundamental fields of astronomy that are uh, really developing now uh, fast in Africa, especially thanks to the international uh, SK uh, project that I mentioned previously, and then the African VLBI network. So uh, nine countries are participating in uh, both uh, initiatives. And in 2017, all of these nine countries signed uh, the Memorandum of um, Understanding to collaborate jointly on the radio astronomy. And this is one of the examples, you know, how we can really use astronomy for development through all the big partnerships. Uh, Ghana was the first country to uh, establish out of uh, uh, South Africa uh, the, and Mauritius, the very first uh, uh, radio astronomy 
uh, under the SKA project that was uh, three years ago. And um, now we have the, uh, starting from 2025, we expect the second phase. So other African countries are now struggling, really each of them with different challenges and difficulties, but they're really putting a lot of efforts to follow Ghana's example and then convert some of the telecommunication dishes, as in the case of Ghana, to the radio telescopes. Uh, then we also have some preliminary projects in Nigeria, uh, in Mauritius, in terms of the radio astronomy in Mauritius, there is a, a quite old radio telescope uh, that was built in collaboration with, uh, uh, with India in, uh, at the beginning of 90s, and it's still running. Namibia is now trying to build the very first millimeter uh, wave telescope. If you remember uh, from the last year, uh, big news about the Event Horizon Telescope, and then uh, the very first observation of the uh, of the supermassive black hole, we were where we were able to see the um, the inner part, you know, of uh, of uh, uh, active galactic nuclei and and the galaxy. Uh, so once we have the uh, first millimeter uh, telescope in Namibia, we expect that the resolution will really improve a lot. So these kind of observations uh, will be even more successful. And uh, South Africa uh, is continuing with its uh, radio astronomy development, uh, especially focusing now on SKA. And recently, uh, the SK was uh, uh, jointly uh, with Hartrau, with a very old uh, um, radio observatory, uh, was, uh, they were joined uh, creating um, a South African Radio Astronomy Observatory. There is a new project going on also where um, uh, Durban and the University of KwaZulu-Natal are really principal actors in Hyrax in order to study the, the hydrogen intensity in, in the universe. And uh, uh, recently, um, uh, the very first phase of Mirkat was uh, finished as well with 64 dishes. Uh, actually, it was already two years ago. So that was a very huge um, uh, step toward the SKA development. So thanks to that, nowadays we can uh, obtain some of the most detailed images uh, with the best resolution in radio. Uh, so here you can see this was a very... Uh, famous uh, uh, image um, uh, from the center of our Milky Way, where you can see all these uh, structures, the filaments, and actually interpreting it uh, became much more complex than uh, what we uh, thought. Or, for example, and these kind of images are now coming from the very first for the very first time from uh, from Africa. Uh, or, for example, for this uh, uh, image, for this very, uh, uh, I mean, giant elliptical galaxy that you can see here on, on this uh, optical uh, image, now thanks to, the, thanks to Mirkat in, uh, in South Africa, we can ob obtain uh, the radio image of the same galaxy with these huge radio lobes, where again, uh, we can study the properties uh, of this galaxy in, in many more details uh, that was uh, then, then uh, it was possible uh, before. When we come to the optical uh, astronomy, again, uh, a lot of improvements have been done over the past uh, uh, few years. In Morocco, we have the observatory with several small telescopes that is very efficiently running. And they're uh, one of the, um, let's say, uh, famous projects that they have is uh, in collaboration uh, with, uh, with the TRAPPIST uh, uh, collaboration for finding uh, the extrasolar planets. Uh, so. Uh, planets out of our solar system. And then uh, um, uh, in Ethiopia, we also have a very small, uh, two small um, uh, telescopes of one meter uh, that again, uh, uh, we had um, a lot of challenges to put these uh, two telescopes uh, to really become operational. And then um, uh, there are projects to put new optical telescopes, like in Algeria. Uh, there is a project running with European Virgo collaboration to put uh, uh, the new telescope for detecting gravitational waves. Or in Egypt, again, the site testing is going on now to putting the large optical Egyptian telescope, probably of 6.5 meters. Then in Kenya, also the project is going on for putting a small uh, optical observatory in collaboration with UK. Burkina Faso uh, is also putting efforts to put uh, uh, to uh, build the very first optical observatory and the small 
telescope has been moved from Chile. Um, and then in South Africa, I mean, uh, the optical observatory is there with more than 20 um, international telescopes, including SALT, uh, that is uh, mainly South, uh, that is actually fully South African, uh, uh, not fully, I think uh, there is a small international collaboration as well, but primarily it's a South African uh, telescope and it's actually the largest optical telescope that we ha currently have uh, in the world. And then uh, recently the, uh, the small optical telescope has been also put together with uh, 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 Mirka so that simultaneous observations can be done between the optical and radio. Then when you come to the gamma rays, also we have in Namibia in collaboration with Germany, one of the currently best um, uh, uh, Cherenkov uh, telescopes uh, for studying the um, uh, high energies and high energetic particles in gamma rays coming from the, from the celestial sources. Uh, and beside the infrastructure development, a lot of progress has been done also in terms of the human capacity building. Uh, with uh, new uh, postgraduate programs in master PhD that started uh, in different African countries, including Ethiopia and then uh, Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya, Namibia, Nigeria, uh, Egypt, and so on. Um, then a lot of um, uh, progress has been done in terms of the outreach. Uh, we now have under the African Astronomical um, Society also the outreach uh, committee. So. Um, many things are coming really, um, uh, let's say the, the, the network uh, that we are currently building is also uh, increasing and improving. Uh, the African, the um, Office of Astronomy Development that is uh, uh, also based in South Africa really contributed a lot over the past um, um, basically 10 years uh, to the astronomy developments, uh, especially in terms of the outreach and human capacity building in Africa. And then also through the NAS, through, through the AVN, through the ISP, through the DARA projects, uh, DARA is based in UK. Also a lot has been done for the human capacity building. So last year uh, we re-established African Astronomical Society um, and now it's, uh, I'm really happy because um, uh, the society is working really very actively. Uh, the idea, the main idea behind the society is really to have, um, to be a bit of, uh, let's say, the voice of astronomy in Africa and that uh, jointly we can, we can really put the efforts together and then contribute to the development of astronomy, space science on the continent. Um, here you can see some of the main committees, such as Science Committee, Outreach Committee, and then uh, currently we are establishing Africa Network of Women in Astronomy, which is a new committee, and the idea uh, behind this committee is really to improve in future the participation of um, women in our field, because currently we really have a very small fraction of uh, women in astronomy and space science. However, you can see that uh, many things are going on, so we really want to guarantee the participation of women from the very beginning. And that's a bit uh, really the vision of uh, all of my colleagues. Uh, um, so a lot of efforts are really there under the African Astronomical Society to make this uh, happen in, in future. So here is um, the list of some of different uh, initiatives uh, that, uh, that we have. Uh, some of them um, have been already running. The others are, uh, let's say, in initial phase. The other are still there uh, as the ideas that hopefully in near future, um, or let's say proposal that, proposal that hopefully in near future uh, will um, will uh, will come uh, come true uh, so i will not go uh, uh, i will not have time to go into details of uh, each of them but it's just for you a bit uh, to have the idea that actually many things are going on so now in the next uh, in the last um, uh, maybe 20 minutes that i have um, I will focus a bit on the example of Ethiopia, where actually uh, I've been working for the past uh, four or five years. Um, uh, and um, uh, four years ago, Ethiopian government established Ethiopian Space Science and Technology Institute. It's the first institute uh, research center of such uh, kind in uh, not only in Ethiopia, but in all East African region. And um, the motto of the Institute uh, uh, is that we explore the universe of the benefit, for the benefit of our people. And um, uh, it's really something in which my colleagues and myself uh, deeply believe 
um, uh, um, uh, in, in what we deeply believe and um, uh, the vision of the Institute uh, is a bit that uh, through the science, space science, technology, including astronomy, we can really improve some of the main challenges on the long term that Ethiopia is facing in terms and contribute really to the social economical um, uh, development um, um, uh, and then uh, contributing to the environment uh, as well. And. Um, uh, these are some of the uh, departments that you can see, and um, I'm uh, working at the Astronomy Astrophysics Department, but we also have other departments that are focused on other uh, space science fields, such as the space physics or remote sensing and Earth observations as well. So I will now... Um, go a bit through, uh, I will focus on the astronomy department and the activities that we are running and uh, uh, um, going through different um, activities that uh, we've been um, um, uh, doing uh, uh, over the past uh, four years, um, four or five years. And um, I will connect each of them with different sustainable development goals as well. So the one of the uh, big assignments of the department is the postgraduate program that we have. Uh, so now uh, for the very first time, uh, we are training the master and PhD students in astronomy. Uh, all of our students are actually attached to some of the public universities across uh, Ethiopia. So in this way, we are really on the long term improving uh, the level of higher education in Ethiopia and uh, contributing to the human capacity development in the country in general that, as you know, is fundamental for the um, uh, uh, social economical growth of the country. And in this way, directly, we can, uh, through astronomy, uh, contribute to the uh, quality education and the fourth uh, sustainable development uh, goal. Because uh, even if we train only a small number of students, uh, those students, when they go back to their uh, university, will uh, then train uh, and uh, teach uh, hundreds of other students, not necessarily in astronomy, but in other uh, fields of, uh, of physics. So, as I said, it's a very important contribution for the development on the long term. Then, beside the postgraduate program, the human capacity building uh, or development in general of our uh, students and young staff members is, again, another important task. So most of our uh, staff members are actually young people that just finished their university and they joined us uh, where astronomy, space science are just uh, very new fields uh, for them. So a lot of efforts has been uh, uh, put uh, on these people over the past four years uh, to give them additional trainings, uh, to uh, give them the opportunity to go abroad, to get different uh, experiences through either summer schools, research visits, and so on. And then through uh, different trainings that have been organized um, uh, in the, um, at the ESSTI and in Ethiopia. So again, uh, through this, uh, similar as with previous, we really can improve the skills and then contribute toward the social economical growth in the, in the country. And uh, uh, directly on the longer term to the SDG uh, 8. Then research is really an important part uh, of, um, uh, of the department and ESSTI. So, so currently we have three research groups that are running in uh, astronomy, including cultural astronomy. Ethiopia has an amazing heritage. It's a very ancient country and a country that, um, uh, that managed to really preserve uh, the heritage, amazing heritage, heritage that it has. And in that aspect, um, a lot of the heritage is related with astronomy as well. And um, as I said, we have cultural astronomy as one of the research groups uh, whose aim is really to study the very initial of science development and astronomy development in uh, Ethiopia, including different calendars uh, and then interpretation of the, um, uh, of the universe and the night sky uh, as well. Um, institutional development has been a huge task over the past years because we basically, when we started, we started literally from zero with everything. So including the institutional development, development of the departments, um, different uh, guidelines, uh, committees, and so on. And then a lot of work has been also done in terms of the um, uh, fundraising, organization of meetings, conferences, proposals, developments, uh, improving collaborations in terms of different projects and so on. So when we put all of these together, we really managed to get 
to contribute to the knowledge generation, to get very first publications and contribute to the science development, give more visibility to Ethiopia and science development um, in the country and ESSTI, contribute to the human capacity development, to strengthen international collaborations and partnerships that are really fundamental for, for the long-term uh, development. And then bring, uh, bring uh, stronger institutions that, again, are very important for the stability of the country as, as well. So I could say that um, uh, on the longer term, we, could, uh, we, uh, we actually contribute to at least these six sustainable development goals that I listed here. Uh, this is just one example of uh, different uh, international meetings that we organized uh, over the past years. Uh, including the 8th African Space Leadership Conference last year or the IU Symposium that was the very first uh, symposium uh, to be organized in Ethiopia and only the third one uh, to be organized in Africa over the last 100 years of the International Astronomical Union. And within, as you can see here, this was the 356th symposium um, uh, and however, only the third one to be organized in, in Africa. Um, then, um, so even through the meetings, uh, uh, it's a huge contribution to the social development, uh, including the development of the tourism, but then the science development in general. And I will give the example after how through the IU symposium, we managed to benefit uh, uh, the broader community as well. Um, technological development is another uh, component that uh, Ethiopia is really putting a lot of efforts currently. And um, uh, as I mentioned, we have the small Entot Observatory uh, now, which is uh, placed um, about 10 kilometers uh, out of the capital in the, in the mountain at 3,160 uh, uh, meters. Uh, and a lot of efforts, uh, as I said, uh, have been placed uh, to put these two telescopes uh, operational so that we can use them not only for the technolo further technological development, but also for the science development, outreach, students' trainings, and so on. And then Ethiopia has really uh, ambitions to become uh, one of the new astronomical sites so that uh, using the natural resources uh, that Ethiopia has, uh, here on the left, you can see uh, that uh, uh, there are many high mountains. So actually, it's uh, the most mountain country in uh, all Africa. And we have many mountains above 3,000, 4,000 meters. So on the north of Ethiopia, currently, the site testing is going on for placing in future with the idea to put uh, the new observatory uh, there. And if uh, um, uh, really uh, we get uh, the very good... Uh, uh, actually, the, the, uh, the dark sky that we have in Ethiopia is really amazing. So why not, uh, if uh, other countries managed, uh, such as Chile or Spain or South Africa, uh, who managed using their dark skies uh, uh, to uh, bring uh, partners and establish to establish infrastructure in their countries uh, and then uh, uh, benefit uh, um, economically and uh, socially, why not uh, Ethiopia can, um, can do it the same in future? Because you always have to somehow uh, start from zero, no? If, if we want to achieve something in, in the future. So definitely uh, through the infrastructure development, technological development, then we uh, contribute on a longer term to the SDGs 8, 9, and uh, 16 uh, as well. Then over the past uh, um, uh, four years, a lot of efforts have been placed uh, to work on the policy framework. So we managed to come um, uh, with the very first uh, Ethiopian space policy and strategy that uh, is now published. Currently, we are working on 30 years uh, program or roadmap for how to develop the science I mean, the space science and technology. And I think this is really important because once we have this, it's really putting the, uh, it's bringing the political engagement, uh, the political engagement in the country that the country has to invest uh, in these fields as well. And then on the long term, we are really contributing to basically all uh, SDGs. 
Beside this, I mean, if we go out a bit out of the scope of uh, Ethiopia, we are currently also having in physics uh, the, uh, the program that is uh, uh, working on, um, I mean, the, the team that is working on the uh, development of African strategy for, um, uh, for physics, for development of physics. So I think that will be also one of the very important steps in terms of the physics development and then uh, astronomy cosmology is there as well as one of the, the working groups. And we also put a lot of efforts over the past years uh, uh, to engage um, and connect with teachers. Uh, we shall never forget that teachers are really fundamental parts of our society and all our educational systems. So we cannot speak about science without uh, teachers. And um, um, a lot of efforts, uh, as I said, have been placed in that aspect. Uh, so in, in my case in particular, um, uh, through the close collaboration with the Network for Astronomy School Education and then my colleagues from Spain and Argentina, we organized uh, different uh, trainings, uh, not only in Ethiopia. So in Ethiopia, we organized uh, free trainings for teachers. Now we are organizing uh, uh, the, uh, the fourth one that hopefully we will be able to, uh, it, has been this, uh, it has been moved because of COVID. So hopefully in January, we will be able to, uh, to carry um, uh, to, to, to make the training possible, but also uh, the trainings with teachers have been uh, organized over the past years in Uganda, in Zambia, in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Ghana as well. Um, so uh, through these, uh, uh, I mean, these trainings are in practical astronomy, but actually what we teach is not only astronomy, but also the, uh, the methodology. So how through uh, the practical experiments by using uh, um, recycled materials or just materials that we have uh, easily um, uh, in our, uh, I mean, that we can easily get uh, in, in our houses, we can actually construct different experiments and show different physical astrophysical laws. So uh, as I said, it's true astronomy how we are actually teaching different me methodology of uh, teaching science. So um, um, in this way, we are really uh, managing to contribute um, uh, to, to the level, to improve the level of education, to promote STEM, which is extremely important because we are really losing people in fundamental sciences and in STEM. And then we also open road toward more equality, you know, uh, uh, bringing uh, more science to the um, uh, developing countries uh, as well. A lot of work has been also done in terms of the education, outreach, and then public awareness. And as I said, astronomy is incredibly useful. We are lucky. I'm lucky to work in astronomy because you can really, I think, um, it's very hard to find people who don't have curiosity um, about different questions that we have about universe. And you can really reach children and public very easily using astronomy. So a lot of work has been done uh, over the past years in collaboration with Ethiopian Space Science Society that is a civic society. Uh, and a lot of work has been done in the schools, uh, students who, um, who um, were coming to visit ESSTI and TOTO as well, uh, different stargazing activities um, and so on. And finally, also a lot of efforts have been um, made uh, to try to understand why we don't have more uh, girls uh, choosing STEM fields. So last year we started in collaboration with my um, uh, colleagues from the uh, Society of Ethiopian Women in Science and Technology. We started with the STEM for Girls project in Ethiopia, working with the secondary school girls and then also their teachers. So unfortunately now due to COVID, uh, the activities have been uh, uh, stopped. So this year uh, we didn't manage really because uh, here the, the schools are still closed. So it has been really challenging and then the online um, education here is really uh, very challenging because the children can't really access, uh, don't have really access to the internet, only a very small fraction. 
And then, as I said, uh, um, uh, over the past, in the last year, a lot of efforts have been uh, uh, made to uh, launch the Africa Network of uh, Women in Astronomy, and hopefully uh, we will be able to make it. Uh, we are now working on the website. We have the free years uh, plan of the activities uh, as well, and hopefully in the coming uh, month, we will be able to make it uh, uh, public. So the, uh, the last few slides, I will just dedicate the last few minutes, uh, uh, five minutes, to just mention a bit uh, the research. Uh, the research done under the extragalactic group that, uh, 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 that I'm uh, running uh, here in Ethiopia, and we have very strong collaborations with uh, East Africa as well, and then with South Africa also. And uh, um, how we can actually, so we are focused on basically studying the nuclear activity in galaxies, you know, or what we call uh, AGN, you know, and uh, sometimes it can be very, uh, it can sound uh, so abstract that uh, uh, very often uh, people can ask, well, how we can really benefit our society, you know, we get this kind of uh, uh, questions all the time. So um, uh, let me a bit uh, try to uh, um, uh, uh, share with you my perspective. Um, uh, this picture here is the picture, it's not related with the nuclear activity in galaxies, but it is somehow related with astronomy. Um, so this picture is taken on the um, northeast part of uh, Ethiopia in a far region. Uh, it's part of the Danakil depression. It's one of the hottest places that we have in the world. And it's also one of the most acid places that we have uh, uh, in the world. And taking into account the current studies, um, it's still, uh, uh, it's one of the places that actually can change our perspective about the life in the universe, because we always uh, think that uh, water is one of the fundamental liquid water, no, that it's one of the fundamental um, uh, parameters in order to, to search for the life. However, here in Danakil, we do have uh, the liquid water, as you can see uh, here, but on this picture, but uh, uh, still uh, there are no signs of any kind of life. And actually all the colors that you can see here are just uh, through the uh, chemical reactions. So it's not through the organic material as you can see uh, in um, Yellowstone uh, in, in uh, US. So Danakil is a very special uh, place uh, beside its beauty. It's a very important place for, uh, for science. And currently uh, it's becoming uh, also one of the important uh, uh, places for uh, doing uh, on um, like um, the research uh, in the field regarding the astrobiology and also astrogeology. So um, it's a place very rich in iron. So um, uh, the predictions are that uh, if we understand how really uh, Danakil has been uh, formed and what are the possibilities of life, then maybe we can also understand better the possibilities of the life um, uh, on Mars and then other planets as well. This is just a bit of the, uh, it's a bit out of, um, uh, I extended uh, more than, uh, it's a bit out of the context, uh, but um, let me go uh, a bit how through the research, the pure research that we are doing uh, in um, uh, astronomy under the extragalactic group uh, in Ethiopia and on studying the nuclear activity in galaxies, we can actually contribute in different ways uh, to the uh, development uh, in, um, in, uh, uh, in terms of uh, society, I mean, social and econo economic development in, in Ethiopia and Africa. So let me just introduce briefly for those of you who are not in, uh, in astronomy. So AGN stands for active galactic nuclei and then active galaxies are galaxies that have this AGN in their center. So, these sources are really amazing sources because they are some of the most luminous sources that we have in the universe. So basically, the luminosity that we are getting from this uh, active galactic nuclei um, uh, is um, that are very small in size. So we can compare the size of AGN uh, with the size of, let's say, our solar system. However, the luminosities that we can get from this very small uh, area in terms of the scales that we are uh, dealing with in the universe can be thousands, I mean, uh, tens of thousands of times higher than what are the luminosities of entire galaxies, such as, for example, our uh, Milky Way. So if we would like to compare with something that we can understand better, 
if you take that the Milky Way has a size of the US, of the United States, then the size of the AGN would be basically comparable with the size of the sand, of the grain of the sand. However, that small grain of the sand would emit uh, uh, tens of thousands of times higher luminosities than the entire Milky Way uh, uh, of the size of the US. So here we can see that we are talking really about very, very particular uh, physics behind. Uh, so nowadays we know that we have actually supermassive black holes in the centers of these galaxies. And then the, uh, the, um, uh, the accretion of the material onto these supermassive black holes and then the liberation of huge amounts of gravitational energy. But the fact is, this is just briefly to open a bit your curiosity that these sources are really very, very particular with very particular physics that goes beyond of only classical physics that uh, or Newtonian physics that we are dealing with. So the importance, uh, these are just some of the points uh, of the importance of AGN studies. So taking into account that these have, they have this very particular and complex physics, it's a challenge for us. For understanding the physics behind these uh, uh, sources, it's a huge challenge that then can bring uh, uh, very important scientific and technological developments. And that is something that we were able to observe over the past decades. Um, they are also, um, uh, so I think I'm running out of time, so I will be finalizing. So they're also um, um, extremely high energetic sources. So we get a strong emission in gamma rays and X-rays as well. And actually by studying these sources, just in fundamental, focusing on the fundamental science, over the past decades, we contributed a lot to the development of X-ray, gamma ray physics and instrumentation. So if you go to the medicine, for example, we cannot, we cannot imagine nowadays diagnostics without X-ray imaging, no? Like the one of the, fundamental parts that we have uh, uh, in uh, is the X-ray imaging uh, or the use of gamma ray um, uh, rays uh, again in um, uh, medicine or in agriculture to preserve the, the seeds. And as I said, important contribution to the development uh, of both X-ray gamma ray instrumentation came from the study of these uh, sources. They are also very strong emitters in all parts of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum going not only in X-ray gamma rays, but ultraviolet radiation, infrared radiation, and then very strong radio sources. So that again brought a lot of contribution toward the multi-wavelength uh, uh, instrumentation development, technological development, and astronomy development uh, as well. They're also possible uh, um, uh, responsible for uh, the generation of cosmic rays. And these cosmic rays are, again, very important for studying the space weather that is uh, fundamental for satellite technologies. And as I mentioned previously, nowadays our daily life is based on satellite data, starting from the navigation, positioning, science, meteorology, and so on and so on. And finally, these sources are also playing a very important role in understanding the evolution of the universe and the very early stages of the universe as well. So they are very important cosmological labs. So in, in Ethiopia, in the research group that we established uh, four years uh, ago, uh, on one side, we do have aim to focus on the fundamental research and understand really the physics uh, uh, behind uh, active galaxies and many of the still open questions. And then what is the role of these sources in galaxy formation and evolution? But in the same time, we also want to contribute using this to the astronomy and space science development in Ethiopia and in Africa. So here you can see the list of the projects that we are currently running. So there are about uh, actually more than 10 projects that we are uh, currently running under the group. Each of the project, uh, well, almost each of the project is uh, related with uh, master PhD students of some of our very first master PhD students. Um, and as I said, all of these uh, uh, students will be going back after to some of their universities, uh, teaching uh, um, uh, other uh, students. So in these four years, we managed really to uh, uh, create the very first PhD master holders in astronomy in Ethiopia through 
again, uh, uh, the pure research in astronomy. So Tzeleked in his uh, PhD is uh, uh, doing the work uh, in the field of um, uh, galaxy clusters. Uh, Tilahun uh, in his PhD is focused on morphological properties of active galaxies. Antoine uh, is based in South Africa. He's from Rwanda and the project is the collaboration between Rwanda, Ethiopia, South Africa and Uganda. And uh, with Antoine, we are also, uh, he was the first master student uh, in Rwanda uh, in astronomy. Beatrice was the first master student in Rwanda in astronomy as well. And the very first, I mean, the first, the first female master student, and now she's doing her PhD as well. So the PhD of Beatrice is again, the collaboration between uh, Rwanda, Uganda and uh, Ethiopia. Shimeles uh, is again doing his PhD in astronomy. Uh, uh, De Gene did his master, now he's doing his PhD in Chile. Um, and then uh, here you can see again the group of uh, um, other uh, master students. Some of them are now starting their PhD. So we managed to basically with uh, uh, in the past four years, uh, not only contribute to the astronomy development, to the knowledge generation, but also to come up with the very first publications, give more visibility to the Eti Ethiopia and ESSTI. Um, then um, uh, contribute also to the, the support of the technological development uh, in a long term, as I mentioned, it's a very important contribution to the educational development, especially in terms of the higher education. And then through all the work that we are doing, as I mentioned, a lot of contribution has been done in terms of the outreach and then public um, awareness as well. Uh, this is just one example how uh, through uh, um, uh, the AGN study, uh, we can contribute again. So last year we organized the, the symposium that I mentioned previously uh, on the topic of nuclear activity in galaxies across cosmic time. And again, the aim of this symposium was not only uh, to have one standard conference in astronomy, but through this to, for the very first time, bring some of the best experts um, uh, uh, in the field for the very first time to, Eti to Ethiopia and Africa, motivate our uh, young generations and very first generation of master PhD students, but also through different activities that we organize benefit the broader public. So we organized the training for the young researchers in science writing in Python before the symposium, the teachers training after the symposium, the outreach uh, activities in the schools during the symposium, uh, then uh, the public talks also during the symposium that you can see uh, here for the general public. So it was very, very, uh, really very, um, a good event in, in many uh, aspects. Um, uh, the very first uh, General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union, Union will be organized uh, uh, in Africa in, uh, in 2024. And I will finish here with this slide uh, that um, um, uh, is the example how through astronomy we can reach broader community. And this is the picture from June this year uh, when my colleagues uh, managed uh, through the using the solar eclipse, the total solar eclipse here in Ethiopia to bring astronomy and science uh, to the north of um, uh, Ethiopia and to some of the most rural and remote areas that, uh, that we have. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so, so much. It's amazing to hear what all, about all the initiatives, all the research you're doing. Um, how you reach people. It's really great to hear. Um, thank you so much for letting us know. Um, we have a few questions, so I'm just gonna read them out. Um, so let me maybe start with a bit more personal question. What drew you to Ethiopia aside from dark skies? Were there any special resources or opportunities that drew you to work there? Yes, um, I get that question actually very often. Um, so um, I have to say that uh, Africa was really always my uh, uh, big passion. Uh, I'm just uh, amazed with, uh, with this continent and uh, uh, all the diversity that Africa has uh, uh, in terms of the human diversity with all the cultures, traditions that we have, but then uh, uh, natural diversity as, uh, as well. 
so for me, it's a bit Africa. It's a bit uh, you, I, I really love uh, astronomy and I'm amazed about the, the universe and all the open questions that we have and we don't have answers. And for me, Africa is a bit uh, another sort of universe, you know, with so many open questions with so many things to explore so in that aspect uh, uh, i've been all uh, i've also always been attracted no but uh, in the same time uh, i have to say that um, it's a bit uh, part of um, uh, um, I'm, uh, i was uh, never really happy with the world in which we are living with all these huge differences and i think that um, uh, I fully believe, uh, uh, as you mentioned at the beginning, that through the education and science, we can really, and as I mentioned uh, uh, in my some of my first slides, you know, that uh, through education and science, we can really uh, fight the uh, poverty on the longer term. And I really would like uh, to see this uh, world uh, um, uh, much more um, uh, uh, fair and uh, um, in terms of uh, the opportunities that we can, as a society, as a humanity, offer to all of our children. So uh, when I um, uh, was, I mean, before coming to Ethiopia, I worked uh, in, I mean, I started basically uh, volunteer work uh, when I was uh, uh, doing my PhD, you know, in Canary Islands, uh, uh, Noelia knows it, and uh, uh, that was the first time when I went to Tanzania, uh, to Kenya as well, to do some uh, um, um, volunteer work with uh, the street children, and then uh, to work in different orphanages as well. And, uh, and basically, since then, I, I didn't uh, stop. Uh, um, so when I got the offer from Ethiopia to come and uh, to help uh, uh, with uh, bringing the, um, uh, with building the program, uh, uh, what I'm doing now is really what I always wanted, you know, uh, that beside really focusing on the fundamental science, we can really also work on, on the, uh, in different aspects on the development of science for the society, really. So, so that's a bit the, the summary, yes. That's really amazing and inspiring. Um, then another more practical question is, um, someone like to hear more about what the Astrobus is? Yes, so the Astrobus, uh, I think um, uh, that was, I mentioned that, in one of my uh, slides uh, uh, um, uh, here, yes. So the Astrobus, um, um, it, it's been organized in Ethiopia twice, as you can see here in 2017 and uh, 19. Uh, but Ethiopia is not the only country that did it. Uh, so it's not like the idea that uh, uh, um, came in, in, in Ethiopia, no? But basically what we did was uh, we rented a bus, uh, the, the, the big bus, and then the bus was traveled uh, uh, for two weeks uh, uh, in 2017 and 19 as well. Bus was traveling through Ethiopia, um, uh, through the uh, remote rural areas and uh, smaller cities uh, trying to reach as many children as possible and interact with different schools, universities as well. So for example, last year in 2019, uh, um, the ESSS, so the Ethiopian Space Science Society in collaboration with, the, uh, with my institute and, and my department uh, uh, managed to reach uh, more than uh, 8,000 uh, uh, children. Uh, during uh, two weeks uh, in the uh, remote rural areas where normally you don't have um, uh, uh, any kind of these kind of initiatives, no, in terms of the promotion of science out of what is just a regular uh, education, you know. So that is very, very inspiring, no, uh, like uh, bringing the science. Uh, uh, so in these astrobuses, uh, the first one in 2017 was only focused on astronomy, but in 2019, uh, it was a bit extended. So beside astronomy, although it, we called it astrobus, but beside astronomy, there were other fields. So we had artists on the, on the astrobus as well, trying to like through astronomy science bring art uh, to the communities. We also had social sciences a bit, like trying to, people from the social sciences, uh, trying to understand what is the scenario uh, uh, in rural uh, Ethiopia in terms of the science development, education development as well. So uh, in 2019, it was a bit more multidisciplinary, but basically mainly focused on astronomy. And we had uh, uh, different, uh, so it was again, 
um, not only theoretical, but also experimental. So many of the experiments from NASA, from the Network of Astronomy School Education uh, were used. Um, we also had um, um, different uh, tools uh, uh, that uh, can be used um, uh, for promoting uh, astronomy uh, to the communities, I mean, to the um, uh, people with uh, 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 difficult, with um, um, uh, with um, uh, visual uh, disabilities. Uh, so it was really, and then the small telescopes, as you can see in one of the pictures. So it was really, really an amazing um, activity, I could say, yes. Yeah, that's a great thing. Do you plan on like doing this again when it's possible or? Uh, yes, uh, uh, the plan is there. Um, so maybe I think now with uh, it's, I mean, as I said, uh, during the COVID time, it's really challenging. I mean, the schools are still uh, uh, not working uh, here in Ethiopia, universities either. So then it's becoming very challenging to reach the children. So maybe next year or in 2022, we can again think about uh, repeating the activity. Yeah, fingers crossed for that. Then there's another question. What are um, Ethiopian or African in general attitudes towards astronomy? And do local myths, constellation and culture play a big part of astrono astronomy outreach event? And also how are careers in astronomy and science viewed? Uh, the last one is? Uh, uh, how are careers, careers yeah, viewed, uh, which, are, which you follow like in the, astronomy the and science? Like doing it, exactly. The job opportunities, yes. Yes, so uh, I have to say that um, really the, um, the Ethiopian Space Science Society that started basically in 2012 did really an amazing uh, work in terms of promoting, uh, just as a civic society, promoting science uh, and education in terms of the astronomy and space science. So when ESSTI started, actually, uh, we had a very, I mean, it's, it's related, no, the, the uh, ESSS was established the first, and then we got the Entoto Observatory Research Center, and then finally the ESSTI that has been a bit uh, combined uh, uh, with the previous, no. Uh, so uh, I have to say that basically over the past um, um, eight, nine years, uh, huge work has been done. So the community, the general community, has a lot of, um, um, uh, is giving really a lot of support uh, for the development of these kind of projects. And uh, it's amazing when you can see uh, how people, because uh, Ethiopia is still one of the poorest countries, and uh, although we are uh, uh, over the past decades, we were uh, one of the countries with also the highest economical growth. But uh, the background from wh where the country started is so low and the, it's uh, uh, also the second uh, most populous country in Africa. So we have now about 110 million people living in the country. So uh, really bringing all of these people out of the poverty um, uh, is extremely a uh, big challenge. And uh, uh, there are so many challenges that the country is facing constantly going through different crises. Uh, so having this kind of uh, um, uh, projects is really giving, uh, it's what I observed you know, over the past years, how much hope and, uh, and also, um, um, yes, the hope and also proud uh, it gives to the country. Uh, last year, when we uh, when the country launched the very first uh, satellite, it was an amazing event. It was the totally national event for the whole country. All people were speaking about the launching of the satellite, uh, how that will contribute to the development of Ethiopia. And then, just to show you how much people are interested, uh, the Entoto Observatory that we have, uh, as I said, nearby Addis, I mean, uh, only last year we had uh, more than 10,000 uh, students and children who came to visit Entoto. And, you know, children and students uh, were coming from far away. I mean, uh, from Aksum, from Gondar, from Mekele, Bahardar, where you need two days in bus to reach Addis. And then another, you know, to, to reach. Uh, uh, so 
you know, passing through uh, like big distances in order to come and to, to be able to, to see the, the infrastructure. And since the field is just developing now, uh, and there are so many plans, uh, not only in terms of the astronomy development, but all the satellite technologies sector. We now have the very first uh, uh, ground station with the first uh, satellite that has been launched uh, last year. There are plans to build uh, the very first uh, communication satellite uh, in the future, uh, the um, uh, more sensitive, like higher resolution um, um, remote sensing satellite as well. Uh, the small maintenance uh, and assembly center is now uh, under the, the project to be built in collaboration with France. So many things are now coming. So uh, really the young generations are uh, really putting a lot of attention on the program. And I think it is really opening a lot of opportunities for the, for the young people. Yeah, that's, that's really great. And it's great that like people are so enthusiastic about it. Um, okay, we have a few more questions. We're already running over time. Maybe um, I finish it off with one more question. From your experience uh, with engagement in Ethiopia, is there anything you think people could do differently here in Europe? Uh, in which aspect? I don't know. Because the uh, question is a bit, uh, yeah. It's uh, a bit it's... wide, yeah. yeah. I guess, yeah, engagement, how to get people excited about science, astronomy, those things. Uh, yes. Um, well, I, I do think that um, I do think that there is a lot of uh, uh, efforts that Europe is also putting in terms of uh, science technology development. Uh, you no, know? and uh, I think uh, now with uh, COVID, uh, uh, it became much more clear. Uh, that uh, investing in science uh, is really fundamental and that uh, including the fundamental sciences uh, because uh, uh, due to the capitalistic uh, uh, system in which we are living, I think over the, the past uh, uh, few decades, we were losing this kind of, you know, that if it is not applied, if it's fundamental, then it is not beneficial for the society. And uh, I think we are a bit, we were a bit forgetting that we can't speak about applied sciences without speaking about fundamental sciences, no? So I think we are, uh, uh, that's maybe one of the positive sides of COVID, you know, that this kind of um, uh, um, mindset, I think is now changing uh, uh, within our decision makers. And I think that the science is um, uh, becoming uh, really one of the more, um, um, uh, important fields, no? Uh, in Africa, I think in that aspect, it's much more clear that uh, really investing in uh, science is uh, something uh, fundamental. The problem is really funding, you know, because uh, um, uh, funding and not only funding in terms of money, I mean, funding in terms of uh, uh, um, uh, money and financial resources, but also in terms of the human resources, because we are really uh, still in many aspects uh, lacking uh, the number of qualified people. And actually, we are uh, always forgetting in Europe, US and other developed countries how much uh, we should be grateful to African countries because we are benefiting constantly from African countries. Most of the, due to the uh, brain drain that is very, very present uh, uh, in um, not only in Africa, in all developing countries across the world, uh, uh, basically, the uh, the best people, the most uh, uh, um, uh, the people with the uh, largest capacities, are very often leaving the countries, and these are the people in 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 whom the the, the countries invested a lot. So uh, you know, going through all the education and giving uh, the free education uh, as most of African countries are doing, you know, from primary school, secondary school, and then even universities, and then losing people uh, at the end so that these people contribute to uh, other countries, no? We actually, the developed countries actually never returned back uh, that kind of, um, uh, let's say, favor, no? Because basically it's just a favor that African countries are, are doing without actually not, I mean, losing the all benefit, you know? So how we can change that is a bigger question and uh, it's not an easy task uh, to do, uh, but it's uh, definitely a very big problem, no? So 
I think at least uh, uh, in European countries, we should be conscious of that, you know, uh, very often we can get a lot of critics uh, toward, we can hear a lot of critics toward uh, African countries, governments know that they're constantly facing the same problems and difficulties and so on, and that they are not uh, uh, very often able to uh, you know, come up with the uh, different developments in terms of science, uh, technology, innovation, and so on. But we are forgetting actually that we are still having huge exploitation uh, in terms of the natural resources, in terms of the human resources here. And then, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, the brain drain that is also one of the, the big problems now. So I don't know if I answered on the question because uh, it was not clear for me, uh, um, but yeah. Yeah, I think that was a very good answer. Yeah, and something really to think about. Thanks for that. And then we have one last question from Noelia, um, who is interested in how does engagement work with the locals in terms of speaking the language? Are there several different dialects in Ethiopia? So this probably is quite challenging. Yes, uh, the languages uh, are really challenging. Uh, it's a very challenging uh, part of our society. Uh, and it's a big problem, uh, honestly. Uh, in Ethiopia, we have uh, more than 80 official languages, 80, uh, and then many other dialects that many of them have been recognized, have been, uh, let's say, um, classified as dialects when they could be actually um, uh, independent languages as well. It's just that we have now the very small communities speaking. So, but I mean, uh, officially we have more than uh, 80 languages, uh, which is really a lot. So uh, when you come to the level of the universities, uh, because at the universities, we have people from different ethnic groups speaking different languages. So the, in Ethiopia, the uh, let's say the, the, the rule is that at the university, the, cl the classes should be in English and then, um, so the English is, let's say, the official language, you know, at the university level, not previously, you know, but then we can really see that it's a big challenge because it's not the same when you are, you have a double task, you know, for the students, it's a double task. They have to understand the science and what they are taught. And then in the same time, they have to, they have the language barrier, you know, because uh, uh, the English is, is especially when you go to the uh, smaller cities, remote areas, uh, and more rural, I mean, children coming from more rural areas, remote areas, and then coming to the cities uh, for studying, uh, it's a huge problem. And you can, you can directly see the, the difference, you know. Um, so it's it's something that uh, uh, there is no like really perfect uh, um, perfect um, way how to do it. Uh, it's uh, it's a bit because then uh, also the teachers, I mean the professors and the lecturers at the universities will be from different ethnic groups. Uh, uh, so either they use English very often, their English is also not uh, uh, the best one and the correct one. So even the the you know, the teachers uh, themselves and then professors and lecturers very often face difficulties. So then you come to the students and then to the matter that they have to teach and understand in case of the students. So it's a huge problem, um, uh, even on the higher, uh, for the higher education. If you now go to the other levels, doing the outreach and the public awareness and let's say promotion of um, science in the schools, language is fundamental. So what we uh, always uh, try, if you really want to, if you, I mean, uh, the English is actually one of the signs uh, also here from what kind of um, uh, social status or class uh, the students are coming. When you hear the students speaking uh, very good English, it means that that person, that student went to the private school where they had, or some of the international schools, which means that the person is coming from much more, from much, uh, let's say, social um, uh, higher classes, no, uh, here in the society. Uh, so it's also, as I said, a bit the sign of uh, the social uh, uh, status. But so if we really want to reach those children that are the most needed, and when we actually do the public, uh, the, the outreach activities, our aim at the department are always public schools because these schools are the 
I mean, the, uh, I mean, in the public schools is where the resources are so limited, even in the cities. And when you go to the remote rural areas, actually in the remote rural areas, you don't have private schools, basically. I mean, it's all public schools and then the private schools will be just uh, within, the, within the cities. So there you really have to focus on the local languages that are spoken in that uh, area. So um, in Addis, uh, we are basically using Amharic because uh, in all schools, Amharic uh, is, uh, uh, is the, the most used uh, language. Uh, so in my case, when I do outreach, uh, then uh, now I, I do speak a bit of my Amharic is very poor and very limited, but uh, uh, combining a bit Amharic with English and then in support with my colleagues, uh, we at the end uh, um, do manage to, to do the, the outreach activities. And in astronomy, very often also, if you do the practical things, um, very often uh, you can find a way to explain many of the things, even if you have the language barrier, you know, uh, and especially, you know, showing different, uh, I mean, showing the pictures and so on. So, but definitely the language is a huge, huge barrier, you know, and then the educational material. That's another point, you know, because again, uh, the the books, uh, the language in which the books are written, and so on, it's it's another big uh, task. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that seems like quite a lot. And mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that was like really really interesting to learn about everything and to ask all these questions. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much uh, once again for for um, your invitation and um, and uh, yeah for staying uh, for almost one hour no <laughs> yes yeah. so thank you very much uh, for organizing the uh, this week and then for the invitation as well yes thank you too and good luck with everything and yes hopefully I see you in twenty twenty four in in South Africa. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much. And thanks everyone for coming. Bye. Bye. -bye.